You started off with um, uh, was it um, Young Scooter? Ooh. Yeah, Young Scooter, and then Metro. Yeah. But how did you even? How did that present itself, or or is that just Atlanta? Because from what I'm experiencing, that's Atlanta, but not no more. I mean, it's definitely Atlanta. One person can connect the dots to you to five different people. So even if those two combinations of names are under the same label, mm. so they have the same team, you know what I mean, in a certain sense. But how I got connected with uh, Scooter was actually through Ebony Ward. Mm. She manages uh, Flo Millie, Future, and Gunna, and uh, she got a few other artists. I think she she's just killing it. But, but talk to me back then. Not Let's not talk about right now. Like At that time, who, was she managing like were like, these two superstars time, at the moment? At that time, she was Future's assistant, and she owned Fly Kicks, is a shoe store on Peter Street. Okay. So, Peter Street was obviously a huge hub in Atlanta at that time. So we talking about 2011. Let's just say that right after I was about to graduate college, she had Fly Kicks store. I had just got my camera, so the store was coming up. Uh, the artist I was managing the artist at the time, and he knew Eb because he was into like streetwear and fashion and we would go to the store and that store used to be like a spot where like Travis Porter might have their mixtape release party at Fly Kicks. It was like a resale store like they had Jays and Jordans for resale and stuff in there. It was kind of a little ahead of its time but she owned that store with um, the owner of T.I.G. Fly. Mm. So her and Fly owned that store. It's called Fly Kicks on Peter Street. So me and her got cool through my artists and me just coming to the store hanging around her. She was like the sister of basically the music industry in Atlanta. Everybody knew Eb, everybody was coming to her store. So when Eb, me and Eb linked up at first, she knew I knew how to do stuff on a computer like graphic design, like literally small versions of it. Okay. So she used to actually hit me to make like electronic press kits was the thing back there. Yeah, yeah, EPK. So yeah, yeah, I made me an EPK. Can yeah. you make an EPK for Mike Will? Can you make an EPK for Future? And I was like designing like little graphic type stuff for Future and them at that time. So she wasn't even looking at me like a cameraman per se. Um, but I was. she just knew I was smart and I added value in other ways. So I would help her with stuff like that. And then she might have me shoot some video of, of her fly kick store commercial or two. So to be honest, she, was, she started lobbying for me to start working with Future. Mm. So she wanted me to be Future's cameraman. That's really how it kind of started. Um, and his manager at the time wanted another cameraman. So they put us on a trial run, like, shit, you go to Miami one week, bro gonna go the next week. I went to Miami, and I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't really ready for the moment. Like, it was it was a lot. Like, future in Miami, it's Pluto time. We had, a, like, a show at Live or something. It was just craziness. It was just a big-ass moment for me. Like... I remember I got left at the club, like, you know, like, just not knowing how to move. Like, all right, when the show's over, we jet up out of here. Before we finish this story, because I definitely want to finish this story, but it's so many other young cameramans coming up that might not understand what that looked like, right? So you said I wasn't ready for the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compared to then, right, because you probably didn't understand that you wasn't ready for the moment until yeah, yeah. you came out of it. What does that look like, not being ready to, for the moment? You got left, but if you can go into that some more. Yeah, I mean, what it looks like is just not not being fully on your P's and Q's. Um, I didn't really understand how it is to move with an artist. I did no research, but I had no mentors either. I had mm -hmm. nobody that did it before that. Like what, that though? Give me some details. You about to be uh, a, a lot of people mentors. Like, if it, um, paint a picture. Like, you going to Miami, Pluto, big artist, whoever it is, right? What I know being on your P's and Q's, what does that look like? We go, got a show at Live. Like, what is what is... What does that look like? I mean, it's it's um, it's hard to really explain like what it is because if I say what I did, somebody else would be like, "That's that's un that's not a realistic thing." But basically, back in those times, obviously, like Future and his team, they just had a fear of being out of town. Mm -hmm. So basically, when the show ends, we leave. Mm -hmm. Like we don't linger. When I get off this mic and I sing that last song, we run out the club and we get in our car and sprint and go. There's like no way to prepare for that. Every artist ain't the same. Okay. I've been with Ray Sherman, they don't do that. They hang and they look out for you, they know who you are, blah, blah, blah. If there's anything I can say about being prepared for that moment, I didn't make my presence felt enough around the artist for him to actually, to actually build a rapport with him early enough or with the team enough so they wouldn't think to leave me. Mm. So I think that's one thing I can say is like, do you know anybody? Can you 
Do you know the security guard? Were you good with X, Y, Z, the manager, the road manager? If you don't make that relationship with the artist, do you know at least other people that can make sure you good? Okay. I didn't necessarily do that coming out. I was moving timid, scared. I, I was just not really talking to no one. So it was easy Was the for pitches them good? Because that's what I'm assuming. When you say not, not ready for the moment, I'm thinking like you ain't getting the right shots. You like We never even got there. Like but I got left the first day. The next, by the time I linked them, and this ain't no Uber. I can't just call an Uber. Right. So I got to figure out how to get back to the hotel. The next day we go to the hotel, I wake up in the morning expecting to get a phone call. It's me not being proactive, waiting on them to tell me what we doing next. Come to find out Future and the rest of the team done checked out that hotel and it's already in a whole nother hotel. Damn. I'm hitting them like, well, where y'all, where y'all at? Like, you, oh, we had a whole nother hotel. Nobody told you? Nah, I'm broke. Also, yeah. how do I get there? There's no Ubers again. Mind you, there's no Ubers. Getting that taxi and pay the 40, whatever it is to get over here. But you got to get over it. Then I get over there. It just was too fast for me. Okay. Like, I wasn't ready for it. It wasn't even about the pictures. They don't even think I even got to turn anything in. I didn't, I wasn't ready for it. So mm -hmm. by the time I didn't capture everything I needed to capture because I wasn't ready for it. Okay. So it wasn't really about the pictures so much. I just couldn't, I proved I couldn't move with them. I was too slow, he was too, man, where he at, bro? He ain't even here. He at the yeah. other hotel, he ain't come downstairs. You should be waiting on know? us type, I ain't waiting Why on Why he hit me in the morning? Why yeah. was he at the lobby downstairs? He ain't paid, he ain't get the call time, he ain't talked to such okay. such. Okay, You ain't got his number, you ain't get the road manager number, you ain't called, like, you know, it was like shit like that, where I would say I wasn't ready, like, I know how to move now, like what to do, how to prepare, and how to do that. But at that time, it's my first time out of town with an artist. I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. I'm thinking that everything is professional, and you're going to get a phone call from the manager, and they're going to say, hey, Cam, are you up? Come downstairs. about to leave. Nah, it's like, we out. Right. It's crazy because, like, I even tell the people I work with, because I work with a lot of younger ones, <clears throat> not as seasoned, and I'll be telling them, like, outside of that, you want to be prepared for the moment as like you own the moment, right? right and yeah. I'm not like a cameraman, but like these are things that I've just learned over time. So like what I mean by that is like owning the moment is like if you want a picture or a particular shot, get the shot. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like definitely gotta get you the don't shot. want to tell somebody to do this or yo, I couldn't get it because they was in the way. No, you gotta own it as if Facts. it's yours. Facts. So it, it kind of sounds similar, but back to your story. I so mean, that's definitely a fact though, <sighs> to to that point. I mean, I'm just talking about the logistical ways I wasn't ready, but right. obviously skill set wise, I wasn't ready mm. also. Like I would never have, hey future, you mind looking this way and taking the picture? I was too scary. Mm. I was too timid. It's actually, that's how I developed my style that actually became iconic because I became known for taking candid photos. I had mm. to figure out a way to get over my shyness and my fear of talking to people and develop a creative style around it. So that's how I started to actually win because most of my photos became candid's raw people didn't even know i was in the room taking a picture of them so i had to make a weakness of mine turn into a strength creatively but of course at that time i wasn't ready to tell future hey bro you mind looking this way you mind doing this you mind doing that i didn't have the right equipment i was using a mm -hmm. lens that wasn't functional for being on the road so i had if you know about cameras i had a 50 millimeter lens that's tight yeah so as i'm trying to shoot future and if we this close i'm too close to you Facts. Like, how I'm going to get, well, you know, these rappers want to show their whole fit. I'm already disadvantaged. I only got one got lens. Type, I ain't right. got no light on my camera. I ain't yeah. got no flash. Like, I'm already just not prepared to do it. So it's little things like that that obviously also didn't allow my work to just blow nobody away. It was like, all right, he cool. I think that's where I heard it from now, bro. I swear. I, I, I know I said it, but it might have been a while ago. And, and I was like, this is when, like, Candids first became a thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I like this type of picture, but I didn't even know the name of it yeah. at the time. And I think somebody might have mentioned your name. They were like, that's how like Cam Kirk shoot or yeah, something like yeah, that. And yeah. this was, but this was like, this was, I don't even think I had a pod. This is way yeah, yeah. before podcast or something like that. So I think that's what it was. But okay, so you wasn't prepared for the moment, right? Let me get back to your story. You come back mm -hmm. and that's when they say, all right, we want to line you up with Scooter. Maybe we could go do down that. and go work with Scooter. Mm. Like you did. Just go there, go work with him. Maybe, this ain't maybe, even, they ain't even know he probably was about to be who he. Yeah, they, they, he had, like, Columbia had maybe just hit 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 the streets. It wasn't doing what it was, what it's obviously doing now. But it was, like, basically, like, G League. Like, not, not to put him like that, but that's what it was. He was developing. You go work mm. with the rookie and figure it out. Y'all y'all more closer on the same level, mm. right? So you go develop his brand and his look. 
and that was her looking out for me and it was the best thing that could ever happen to me that changed my life you was able to build with him I'm assuming. i was able to build with him my creativity was able to shine he didn't have a name much bigger than mine we was on the same level so mm. when you're seeing his stuff and getting familiar with his image i was creating it mm. so now who's like every photo you know of scooter it was like cam took that that was cam's work versus the future he's taking photos every day it's Thirty thousand people shooting him big shows photo shoots magazine covers and all that it's so many pictures of his image with scooter it wasn't i was creating his image and i was able to build all around with him i was scooter's damn near assistant i was his photographer i was his public relations pr his internet help i was the one i built his soundcloud for him i was releasing music for him i was doing his graphic design work i put i made most of his album covers you know what I mean? That also helped me because I was able to slide my photos in as covers. Mm. Like, hey, we going? We ain't gonna use no. I'm gonna use this one right here, and now I got my first album cover. So Columbia, but I'm assuming Columbia was still paying you for your work, though, right? And I was making, and this is no not because I love. I was making 150 dollars a show. Okay, so that's but that's not even the work you were doing far as album covers. And I never got paid for any of that. All right, so let me be selfish for a second, bro. I just made a tweet the other day. I said, bro, like, I want, I'm for everybody, like, uh, um, getting exposure and, yeah. and growing with people. But, like, I want to afford, I want to be able to afford everybody. Because yeah. nowadays, I feel like there's no growing with people now. Like, I feel oh, like yeah. if you ain't really paying somebody's salary, you, you really don't have the leverage to be able to say, I want you exclusive to me. Yeah. But I feel like at a time, it was like that. And I'm just wondering. It was. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, do you think it would have been the same thing in today's society because today's society is like, okay, I shoot for you for a second, right? And the moment I get in the room with somebody else that has a bigger opportunity, and there's no knock to you, thank you for that, but it's like now I, I got to grow, right? Yeah, jumping shit, and yeah. I'm wondering like, looking at it like that, but compared to your, your experience of like, man, I stuck with somebody and this really helped me. Hell yeah. Do you, do you think there's a space for that in today's society at all? I mean, I think the younger generation of creators have now have a blueprint of what success looks like. Let's speak specifically to photographers. Through me, other dope photographers that have came out and have made it success for themselves, they know what success looks like. Mm. So they're able to like see it differently. Okay. When I was doing it, there was no body I looked up to. Okay. There was not a Cam Kirk of my gen or time that, that was sense. the guy that was killing it that I could see what it took for him to do it. So when I was in that room, all I knew was pay, like eat the food that's on my plate. That like, makes sense. go kill this, bro. Yeah. Keep going and build. Now, I also had vision. I knew when I latched on to the right person. Like, mm. if, and it's, I say this to this day, like, if anybody knows Young Scooter's story, if you followed it, he was bigger than, there was no Migos, there was no Rich Homie Quan, there was no Young Thug. It was Young Scooter. Mm. Like, we went from 1500 a show to back then, 2012, he was getting 35000 a show mm. when hip-hop wasn't doing what it's doing now. Yeah, thanks. He was killing that shit, all independent, and we were working with everybody. This man had songs with Wyclef John, Cameron, Fat Joe. Like, I met all of these people through Young Scooter. So I knew I was working with a superstar at that mm. time, too. Birdman was around us. Like, I knew what it was, so... I also saw that vision of like building with this is going to make me give me a larger piece of the pie mm -hmm. and I'm be able to do a lot more with Scooter and I'll be more in control of my destiny here. Um, so I kind of knew that with him. That makes sense. You got to got to see the vision. And, and honestly, you got to be somebody that has some type of value other than outside of your two yeah, eyes. And you got to <laughs> take a risk. Today's society is too soft. They're not mm -hmm. willing to take a risk. You know, what I mean, the most generation they want money now they don't have a vision they don't have patience also so it's, it's microwave error which just everything around them makes everything so fast Facts. so they don't know that this was a, i was playing a three to four year game longer than that when i was working with scooter i had a vision for not today or tomorrow but two years down the line when when he's the biggest artist out the south where would i be at and how would that take my career we were talking about label deals for him and when he starts to develop artists we were already thinking like how I'm going to play a part in a label, mm. like something that that's beyond whatever we was working on at that time. So I already knew the like the patience of it all. Like it's going to build. I see where I'm going with him right now and I see what this is going to lead to. That same thing obviously happened with Metro Boom when I met him at Morehouse dorm room. Mm. I saw a vision like he's going to be this like we built it like we saw it together. Like but I saw the patience. I saw one day we're going to be 
rocking shows with Drake. I saw one day these things happen. I was there to witness when those pieces started to form together, but that was a two to three year process. Yeah, and it took hard. time, but a lot of people don't have, they don't have to see it as slow as I did because it's it's a lot more instant now, which I will say, things move a lot faster. So, yes. Like, you don't have to build with one person. You don't. And that's just the way of, that's how it is now. Yeah, you don't. Now, you, you keep jumping ship to ship, you're not really planting a, a strong foundation for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you can end up, you know, failing, you know, thinking you're just climbing a tree, moving fast. So it's risky in that nature, yeah. but you got to know who to who to bet on. And I've always had been blessed to be surrounded by great people to bet on. 